Welcome to the Sunday morning Bible class brought to you by the First Southern Baptist Church in Sorrell Ranch in Glendale. We're glad to be able to provide this service to you. We hope, trust, and pray that wherever you are, that you have come ready to study God's Word, as we will get into the pages of God's Word to discuss those things that are pertinent and important to all of our lives as children of God. We hope, trust, and pray by the end of this lesson that you will have increased your faith, as the Bible calls all of us to increase our faith. If you like the Sunday Bible study or the Morning Touch, we encourage you to click that red subscribe button to the right and subscribe, join our team, and encourage us as we try to encourage and reach out to others. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Acts uh, today, uh, but we're also going to be going to the book of Colossians. So, we're going to focus on a gentleman, little known, but very important that we learn from him. His name is Archippus. Archippus was an individual who traveled with Paul during his missionary uh, efforts to the Gentiles. And we're going to learn a little bit about Archippus, and we're going to learn from Archippus. And we hope, trust, and pray that if you are an Archippus today, that you will be enlightened or illuminated and it will encourage you to rise up and be the child of God and the light of the world that Jesus calls every child of God to be. First of all, I want us to examine some things from God's Word that call our attention to the need for us to focus on. Because you see, what we note, or what we notice, is that when a person is a child of God, they are excited. They are ready. When you study the book of Acts, you find that everyone who became a child of God was very vibrant and very forward going because they were excited about learning about Jesus, uh, obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, following his words, and they were very, very caught up in telling other people about Jesus. And no matter what circumstance appeared before them, they were willing to go through it all and be totally in line and totally excited about the opportunity to share Jesus. And that's what I want us to focus on. Because the gospel changes the heart. It changes the heart to the point that when one accepts that gospel truth and they have been released and relieved of the sins of the past, the fact that God remembers them no more and you have a new relationship in Jesus Christ, that is the beginning. And it is also a great source of joy and happiness. And it instills in you a great desire to want to take that same message that changed you to change others. The gospel has impact. You know, in Romans 1.16, the Bible tells us that it is the power of God unto salvation. Imagine that. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The mere fact that Jesus Christ lived, died, was crucified on the cross for the sins of mankind rose again and has arisen to the right hand of the father to intercede for us that's amazing and that is something that when you learn that i have been released the pressure is off your shoulders and you can move forward forgetting those things that are behind you can press forward for the prize. That prize is eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is something that had an impact on the people in the book of Acts. You know, I'm reminded how the gospel, for those who accept that gospel, makes you bold even in opposition. 
You know, the gospel has never been loved by Satan or loved by the devil or loved by those who do not accept Jesus Christ. The gospel has never been loved by those individuals. But when there is opp opposition against you because you believe, because you accepted Christ, because you are now saved, when there is opposition that rises up against you at school, at home, in the workplace, in the street, when those things rise up against you, the gospel makes you bold in opposition because you know who you have believed in and you're persuaded that that same Jesus is able to keep all of that faith committed against that great day. In Acts chapter 4, we, we see such an example. In Acts chapter 4, if you have your Bibles, turn there. And we'll read briefly, but here the apostles in the early church are under pressure. They're under pressure to stop preaching. They're under pressure to stop teaching. They're under the threat of persecution. But they know what they believed. They know who they believed in. They know the gospel to be true. They know Jesus to have lived and died and to have arisen from the dead and ascended to the Father. So this is how they respond to that. This is how they respond to the challenges. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, beginning with verse 27. For in fact in the city, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, assembled together your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, consider their threats grant that your slaves may speak your message with complete boldness while you stretch out your hands for healing signs and wonders to be performed through the name of your holy servant jesus christ when they had prayed the place where they were assembled was shaken oh that's the power of prayer there by the way when they prayed the place was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak God's message with boldness. You know, when you stand in the faith and you stand up strong and you pray about that faith, God will send the Spirit to build you up and you will, like the apostle, stand up and stand out and speak with boldness. Opposition creates boldness. The gospel changes the heart. Your faith gives you boldness. And that boldness not only is, becomes part of you, but if you look at Acts chapter 5, verses 29 through 31, you rejoice even when people move against you or they talk about you or they frustrate you or they try to ruin your reputation. You respond in the same way the apostles did in Acts chapter 5, verses 29 and 31. You know, listen to this. The Bible makes it clear. The Bible says that when you are under challenge, you respond and you rejoice in your persecution and you speak boldly, obeying God rather than men. Acts 5, 29. Now, go with me to Acts 5 and verse 39. But if it is for God, you will not be able to overthrow them, that you may be found fighting against God. So they persuaded him, and after they called in the apostles, they flogged them, and they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they released them. Then they that went out from the presence of the Sanhedrin, they went out rejoicing that they had been counted worthy to be dishonored on behalf of the name. In other words, they were under threat. They were under persecution. They were under punishment. And they were flogged for the faith and told not to speak. They said we could only speak what we've seen and heard. They told that group who opposed them, we must obey God rather than man. You see, that's what true, honest, on fire faith does it's a fire that cannot be quenched it's a fire that cannot be put out 
It's a fire that's willing to walk through fire because the individuals who have that kind of faith and walk through the fires of persecution or through the fires of threat or through the fires of even being flogged or jailed for the cause of Christ, they do that knowing that God is with them. And as long as they speak truth, God is with them. And the joy of it all is that you feel good about it. It says they went on after being beaten and flogged. They counted it joy. They rejoiced that they had stood firm in the truth and they were punished. They were in a great class because Jesus himself was also flogged and punished and even crucified for standing up for what is right and true. So the gospel not only makes you bold in opposition, it makes you rejoice in persecution. It also makes you lively and it reignites the soul. Look at Acts chapter 8. In Acts chapter 8, there was a man who was known as the Ethiopian eunuch. He was studying the word of God. He wanted to know the truth. And the Lord, by the Spirit, sent him Philip, the evangelist, into his life. And Philip started at the same scripture and preached to him about Jesus Christ, about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And at the end of telling him about Jesus, it was the eunuch who raised the question, See here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? And it was Philip who said, If you believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you may do so. And you know, it was the eunuch who said, after hearing from Philip the evangelist, he says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 36. The chariot stopped. They went down into the water, and he was baptized. But check this out. Knowing the burden of sin that was on this man's life, Knowing the questions that were on this man's heart, his search was fulfilled by Philip. His questions were answered. And when he went down into the water and he was baptized and he came up out of the water, the Bible says Philip was taken away by the Spirit. But the Bible says the eunuch, look at verse 39. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. But the eunuch did not see him any longer. But here's what I'm talking about. But he went on his way rejoicing. Why was he happy? Why was he lively? Why was he revived? Why was he re reignited? His soul was on fire. Because his sins had been forgiven. Because his burdens had been lifted. And he took that message with him. I'm sure everywhere he went. Think with me. The gospel changes the heart. It changes the direction of the soul. It has an immediate impact on the way you think, the way you feel, the walk you walk, the words you speak. It makes you bold in the face of opposition. It makes you rejoice even when you're persecuted. It makes you lively and rejoice reigniting the soul your burdens are lighter the apprehensions that you feel are eased just like the unit because you accept Jesus you come out of that water with some zeal a desire to want to tell others about your faith that's the power of the gospel to change your life now our hearts are turned to Paul's message and his mission to the Gentiles. He took the same gospel that changed the Ethiopian eunuch to the Gentiles. And one of those Gentiles was named Archippus. Archippus was a saint that lived at Colossae. But the problem that Archippus has, he experienced the gospel. He experienced Paul's message. He walked with Paul and I'm sure he was vibrant at one time in his life. But he had gotten to a point to where he had fallen away. He was not so faithful anymore. 
in discharging his responsibilities as a saint, as a child of God. So we had to be reminded, turn over to Colossians chapter 4. When Paul wrote the book of Colossians, at the very end, when he's doing the end messaging of Colossians, in verse 17, look very closely, Paul took the time to mention Archippus. Here's what he said. And tell Archippus, this is very specific, and tell Archippus, pay attention to the ministry you have received in the Lord. Pay attention to the ministry you have received in the Lord, so that you may accomplish it. It's one thing to hear the word, to respond to the word, and it's a totally different thing to obey the word and follow through with the word. Paul mentioned Archippus this time in the scriptures to remind him to be faithful. This was a man, again, who was one of Paul's traveling companions. He was one who had been taught well. He was given good examples that walked before him. But somehow and some way he lost that zeal he lost that fire he lost those things in his soul so he had to be reminded as sometimes we always do to rise up to receive the ministry that you had once accepted fulfill that ministry you know if i might add at this point sometimes friends Distractions take us away. Like the old Calgon take me away, the distractions of this life and this world can take us away from what's really important. The distractions of daily life, the distractions of family, the distractions of home, the everyday distractions of friends and hobbies can take us away and it can cause the once shiny bright shiny light to become dim it can cause the luster that was on our life the light of the gospel burning in our heart that fire to become low we can become low on fuel low on power and our light instead of glowing brightly for Jesus Christ somehow burns dim and we lose our enthusiasm and our faith becomes a routine that we're not excited about let me remind you in the book of Acts the gospel made people bold the gospel made people rejoice the gospel lit a fire in the heart and in the soul and it burned bright for the whole world to see friends neighbors family countrymen they all were excited to see the change in your life but like Archippus perhaps the daily distractions of life caused your flame to burn dim or even go out. The daily distractions of life cause you to lose the enthusiasm that you once had. That is the story for many of us who have allowed our faith to become routine, who have allowed our desire just to wane. We need to take a look at our hearts. We need to stand in the mirror of God, the Word of God, and see what our spiritual status is with the Lord. Many of us are like Archippus because we no longer share that zeal and that vibrant enthusiasm for the gospel and the truth. We stand around, we wait around, and we do nothing. Paul reminded Archippus of the need for him to regain his zeal of the need for him to rekindle the fire of boldness he called into remembrance his need to remember what Jesus had done so well for not only Archippus but for all of us on the cross indeed Archippus had gotten distracted Archippus perhaps had gotten discouraged in his faith Archippus allowed his faith to grow sour, 
to spoil in the process. And you know, when we don't have boldness, and when we allow our flames to grow dim, our faith begins to sour. And soon it spoils. And then we find it dying on the vine, drying up like a weed in the desert heat without water. You know, today, Archippus is going to teach us the importance. He's going to remind us of the value of having zeal in our lives. You know, there's a need for us to go back to what the Apostle Paul reminded Archippus and the Colossian Christians of. If you turn with me to Colossians chapter 3, let's just in a few moments take a look at some of these things. You know, the, one of the first things we have to do to regain our zeal and our boldness is to set aside the old man. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, the Bible says this, Set your minds on what is above, not on what is on the earth. Your faith begins to spoil and sour when your focus changes from heaven to this earth. When your distractions take you away from heaven and your mind is on things of the earth. We are told, Paul as a reminder, set your minds on what is above, not on the things of this earth. We are also, in verse 5, told quite clearly to put to death what belongs to our worldly nature. All of us are humans. And we have a worldly nature. You have to put to death, mortify those members in order that you might allow that flame to rekindle. And allow that fire to burn. And to be a bright and shining light. To be a beacon and a lighthouse for others to come to Jesus. You've got to put aside and mortify those things such as, verse 5, sexual immorality, impurity, lust evil desire, greed, idolatry. These things brings God's wrath to the disobedience. He says, before you were a child of God, you walked in these things. But now you must put them away. And you must put them away in every way, shape, and fashion. Put away the anger, the wrath, the malice, the slander, and the filthy language from our mouths. Do not lie to one another, for you have put off the old man in his practices. What are you saying, Paul? You're saying in order for me to rekindle my flame and become bold again, in order for me to get rid of my sour and spoiled approach to Christian living, I have got to put away the old man and all of the things that the old man did. Because you see, when I accepted Jesus, I was excited and I was powered up and I was enthusiastic and I was ignited because I was able to get rid of those things that were dragging me down. They were dragging me down. The old man and his deeds. Paul says we must refocus, put aside those things so that the light will burn brightly again not only that we have to allow the peace of God to rule in our hearts as we live we must live with prayer and thanksgiving you know one of the keys to putting away the old man of sin and all of his evil deeds is you gotta talk to God you know we're human the devil will tempt us he will come back into our lives again and again and again he will try to put out that fire. He will try to snuff it out. He'll try to throw water on it. He'll try to cause and cast doubt in your life and in your heart. All to cause your faith to grow sour and to spoil. Paul says, be on guard. You're a new person. You got to talk to God and ask for strength. You know, verse 15 is a key verse of chapter 3 where he says this he encourages you and me in verse 15 as I read let the peace of the Messiah to which you were called into one body control your hearts and be thankful let the message of the Messiah Jesus Christ dwell richly in you 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. This is a daily work. It's not just a Sunday event. Let me say that again. This is a daily work, not just a Sunday event. In order to beat the devil at his game of trying to spoil your faith, spoil your Christianity, sour your example to the world, you must pray and speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, encouraging, admonishing, reading God's word. This is the message that Archippus needed to get him back on track. This is the message that the Colossian Christians needed to get them back on track. This is the message that you and I need daily to keep us back on track. And if you're off track today, go to Colossians chapter 3 and please reread that. Understand that when you became a child of God, when you became a Christian, you felt light. You felt your burdens washed away. You felt like a new person. The devil's goal and the goal of those who are not children of God is to get you to look back and go back. If you look back, you go back. Our goal today is to keep you from looking back. Paul's goal with Archippus was to keep him from looking back and going back. This is a forward run to eternity. And in order to do a forward run to eternity, you cannot look back. You must mortify those members. You must put away the old man and his deeds. And you've got to press forward. Press forward talking with God and all that you do in word and deed you got to do in the name of the Lord go down to verse 16 and 17 that's what it says whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord giving thanks to God the Father through him it is very important that we set up for ourselves a, a blueprint of success in order to make it through this life it's tough like I said the devil is after you. The devil is after me. He wants our soul. He wants us to walk away from the cross. He wants to spoil our Christianity. Spoil our example. Sour our faith. He wants us to give up on God. But if you listen to the Apostle Paul in the book of Colossians, when he tried to get to Archippus and the other Christians at Colossae, he wanted them to understand that we must fulfill our mission as children of God by marching forward with Jesus, by marching forward in faith with this message, by being bold in that message, because that boldness will carry us through to eternity and to the hearing God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. One more thing. Let's look at verse 24. In verse 24, he says this. I want you to know, knowing that you will receive a reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Jesus Christ. This service, this dedication, this loyalty will not go unrewarded. If you are able to lay aside the things of this world. Set your mind on things above and not on the earth. If you're not uh, willing to walk away from those distractions, you must be willing to walk away from those distractions in order to receive that inheritance, that reward according to promise. There are some of us who allow the distractions to get the best of us. There are some of us who allow our daily life to get the best of us. There are some of us who will be like our kippers, who will have to be nudged into faithfulness. Please don't allow yourself to be like our kippers. Please don't allow yourself to be distracted by the things of this world. Understand that verse 24 and 25 tells us that we have an inheritance. Verse 25 tells us that for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong, whatever wrong he has done. Know this first. We need to be reminded to stay on track. 
because wrongdoers will be paid because the wages of sin is death that's what the Bible says but the gift of God is eternal life Romans chapter 6 verses 23 and 24 very important that we understand this and then as we focus and we wind this study down look at chapter 4 and verse 2 chapter 4 and verse 2 tells us devote yourselves to prayer stay alert with thanksgiving at the same time pray also for us that God may open a door for us for the message to speak the mysteries of Jesus Christ you know Paul was in prison but he continued to have faith that this message was going to go out and he continued to admonish and encourage his brothers and sisters in Christ to speak the word of truth and to let their speech be gracious and seasoned with salt that men may know the truth you know it's very important that in order for people to listen to us to listen to our message they must understand that we are serious about the message that we bring that we are serious that we live the life that we walk the walk we talk the talk we live the life and if we do that with enthusiasm with boldness and with fire even under pressure even under opposition even under persecution we rejoice in that and they see they can't get to us because we know what we believe and we're persuaded that the Lord Jesus Christ can keep that which is committed against the great day of judgment that coming when those who know Jesus will be rewarded and those who don't know Jesus will be paid for the sins that they've committed I want you to know today that it's very important that we know the truth so that it may set us free that it's very important that we have the kind of boldness and the kind of life in our souls so that we can tell that story so that we can give that testimony to the world that Jesus Christ changed my life Jesus Christ changed your life and how the changing of your life and the changing of that direction made a difference you know there are people out there right now waiting to hear you tell them that child of God please understand Paul's message to Archippus was sincere and from the heart because he knew the power of the gospel and he knows what happens when you and I get powered up when our lights shine bright when it ignites our soul and our hearts and we tell our story to the world it makes a difference it changes our schools it changes our workplaces it changes our neighborhoods it changes our communities it changes our streets it makes a difference so let's get excited about that gospel let's get excited and be faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ which is the power of God under salvation to every person that believes you know the morning touch Sunday morning lesson is designed to help us take that one step further all we ask you to do is if you believe Jesus Christ today that the Word of God is the power of God and the salvation we ask that you do the same thing that the eunuch did ask those questions learn about Jesus Christ repent of your sins and be willing to put the Lord on in baptism put on that new man you see Jesus waits for you he wants to give you that new suit so that you can walk in boldness so that you can rejoice so that your light can shine bright Jesus waits for you to reach out to him he stands at the door and he knocks and he says if a person opens I will come in to him he is willing and ready to take on your anxieties and your burdens to make a difference in your life to change your life that's what the Sunday morning Bible lesson is all about and as we examine this today I want to encourage you not to be Archippus stand up you know he was reminded 
to come back to the Lord. He was reminded to be faithful. He was reminded to fulfill the ministry that he was exposed to and that he knew all so well. If you're in need to restore your life today, like Archippus, I want to encourage you to rise up and fulfill your ministry. To rise up and change your direction. And to rise up and no longer allow your faith to be sour and spoiled. To rise up and no longer allow yourself to be distracted by others and the daily distractions that the devil places in front of you. Get excited about your faith again. Rejoice about your testimony and how Jesus Christ changed your life. You know, we encourage you at the Morning Touch to contact us at the church. FBC in Glendale, Saguaro Ranch on 59th Avenue. You can call us. Google us. Look us up on the web. FSBC Glendale call the church we'll be glad to answer any Bible questions you may have this Bible lesson is for you to encourage you if you need to come back to the Lord come back to the Lord rekindle your spirit you may think that it wasn't possible maybe Archippus thought it wasn't possible but Paul says Archippus I know you come back to me fulfill your ministry that's the case in your life come back to the Lord fulfill the ministry if you haven't accepted Jesus know that the gospel of Christ can change your life and change your direction be willing to repent be willing to give up the old man of sin and come to Jesus and worship him in spirit and in truth accept that promise that free gift of salvation that free gift of grace it awaits you it awaits you. Come to Jesus now. You know, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. But certainly, we thank you for listening to the lesson this morning. As we close, I'm going to pray for you and pray that if you're in need of strength and encouragement to renew your faith, to do so. If you need to come to Jesus, contact us. Let us help you. Let us pray. God, we're thankful this day for this great day to study your word. For the opportunity to know the truth father we pray for those who are like archippus who have fallen away and allowed their their faith to grow sour or to spoil father touch their hearts today that they may rise up and turn away from the distractions and the the temptations of the old man have them come back to the cross renew their life and their spirit renew their hearts that they may have a new testimony to tell others and to share and a new example. Father, my heart goes out to those who don't know you, who hear this message and want to change. They've been looking to change their direction, but they didn't know how. Father, today is the day, as the Apostle Paul has spoken in Colossians 3, there is a way to put off the old man. There is a new way. There is a new man awaiting. Jesus Christ the very Son of God, is waiting with that new suit, that fresh clothes to put on. And Father, we pray that if their hearts are heavy, they have burdens, they have anxieties, we pray, Father, that they come to know you and that they will repent of their sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that they will put on that new suit that you have waiting for them. Father, we pray that they will call us and contact us. Let us help them take that step. We are ready. We are willing. We are reached out to touch their lives and their souls with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let no one walk away from this lesson unprepared to meet God. Bless us and keep us and watch over us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, thank you for once again tuning in. We hope that you've been encouraged. We hope that you've been uplifted. We hope that we've given you a track or a way to come to Jesus today or to restore and renew your faith. Until next Sunday, God bless you and keep you. We'll see you again next time on the Morning Touch Sunday Bible Lesson.